on this. Here we go. So good morning. Yes, today we are going to once again review our sentence structure. Um, have play a little game of making a sentence uh, with some pieces, and then look at um, paragraph idea generation. How do we come up with ideas, and how do we structure them? Okay, so um, let's get started. Um, first, we're going to look at some words that we often use in um clauses uh, yeah i'll just put it on there and I'm gonna... oh um so i have not seen anybody using the padlet link that i have sent you um has anyone tried to use the padlet link um and had difficulty with it put your hand up if you have have you tried to use the Padlet link and it's caused you problems? Okay, you have used it. Have you used it successfully or not? You can say, but you've tried the Padlet link. All right. Um, if you can think about it, if there's a reason that um, if it if it's not easy to use or if it's not friendly, if there's a reason for not using it, should I use something else? Um, is there a problem with it? Not successful. Okay, didn't know how. Did you click on the link and it gave you something wrong? Was it the was the link wrong, Fatima? No, sorry. It was how to interact with the article. I didn't know how to create, how to answer the article, or how to, you know, how okay. to just work it. I went to the link and I slide in everything, but I just didn't know how to use it. Okay. Uh, would it be helpful if I show you once again? Yeah. Yes, please. Excellent. Sorry. I, I think I might have missed the last one. This one. That's fine. Not a problem. Okay. So uh, I'm going to, uh, we're going to start with a little section on that because that's where you can write you can practice writing summaries and you can read other people's summaries which would be a really wonderful thing if we all do that everybody's english improves so you can um so i will share the screen and we'll do this now so uh yeah i'll just share the whole screen so just in case Right. So this is what the where the Padlet link will take you. It should take you to this page. All right. Um, the way to use this is to click on. Now I've added a description right here. I did that this morning to hopefully remind you how to use this. So you can see my summary down here under a ship is too big. It says, click on the image on the top post to go to news and levels and read the article, and then click on the plus sign below. See this plus sign? Yes, yes, I see. So I'm going to show you. So we're gonna click on, I've got my mouse up here on the um, image. If I click on that, it opens the article. All right. So then you can read the article and then, oops. Is that clear? So we click on the image at the top of the, sorry, this is, oh, frustrating. Oh, maybe if I just do that. There we go. I'll just yeah, it hit my tabs so I couldn't get there. So um, if you start at Padlet, if you click on the image at the top, you get the it takes you straight to the article. If you come back to Padlet and you click on the plus sign at the bottom of the column, okay. So click on the plus sign at the bottom of the column, and you can write. 
four. <laughs> The W questions, <laughs> right? And then down here, then you click down and that's the, the title. So you don't have to put a title on yours if you don't want to, but you can. And then you answer, this can be your answers for the who, <laughs> what, <laughs> where, when, <laughs> Why and our oddball not beginning with the W. Oh, okay. You don't have to answer all of them. Just answer as many as you can. And when you're done with that, if you click publish, right there, and you're done. All right. Now the controls may be slightly different if you're doing this on your phone, but it should be accessible from your phone as well. Okay. Any questions? No, that's good. Thank you. Is that a little clearer? I hope because I really don't yeah, yeah. It's possible for you to use this. I think it's, thank you. It, it can be um, a really useful. Um, and I'm going to delete that. But here's um, actually, I'll edit this and say, <laughs> oh. <laughs> to do it <laughs> there we go all right so hopefully by next week i'll see a few more of these on here i will add one more news article this week as well thank you for telling me you needed the help and i'll remind people that they can use this recording to remind themselves in case they can't find it all right good stuff Right, well, while we are here, let's look at some language and um, uh, also a, uh, an article to give us some vocabulary practice this morning, all right? So I thought we would start with the one minute grammar because, and maybe you can actually, maybe you can tell me when we get to the six minute article, why I put them in the reverse order this morning. So first we're gonna to listen to this gentleman describe because, as, and since. How do we use because, as, and since? What are we, actually, what are we trying to find as a relationship? What, what are we describing as a relationship when we have, when we use these words? The reason? Yes, it's a reason. Exactly. So let's see what he has to say about words that tell give us the ability to tell reasons for things. Hi, I'm Tim from BBC Learning English, and today I'm going to tell you about three useful words. Because, as, and since. These are all used to give reasons. Because is more common than as or since, and we use it when we want to focus on the reason. <sighs> I'm tired because I didn't sleep very well. When we want to give extra focus to the reason, we can put the because clause at the beginning of the sentence. Because my bed is uncomfortable, I'm getting a bad back. As and since are more formal than because, and we use them to focus on the result rather than the reason. I hope Tom's brought that comic as I wanted to borrow it from him. Noodles are popular since they're easy to cook. We often use as and since clauses at the beginning of the sentence. Just remember to add a comma. So, as our minute is up, I'll finish recording this video. Right, so these are a little bit subtle. Uh, let's do a little bit of the reading just to be sure. So, because, as, and since. We've got three examples here. Can you see the differences between them? Because I'm tired because I didn't sleep well. I'm tired as I didn't sleep well. And I'm tired since I didn't sleep well. The first one is a little stronger. Yeah. 
because it's definitely the easiest to use and um, the most straightforward as well. All right. Uh, it does focus on the reason you're reading I like these examples, but you're reading this because you want to learn English. Um, they won't be here because they're on holiday. It does focus on the reason, doesn't it? Um, the second the, the second and the last one, I think they are most like result oriented mm -hmm. other than reason oriented. Exactly. I hope Tom brought that comic as I wanted to borrow it from him. Yes, it's much more about the 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 focus on the reason as opposed to a little to... bit uh, like formal formal use. It's yes. not uh, you know, just a speech. People just use it because in the speech, but I think as a sense like formal language. Yeah. So, because it's definitely most common, as and since, slightly more formal, and they shift the focus slightly. So, not bad. Um, shall we do the quiz? I don't know if anyone's been to these. I, I always put in the link for these, but there's also a quiz at the bottom <clears throat> that we can do. So, why don't we find out? True or false? Because, as, and since are used to give opinions? No, false. <laughs> yes, exactly. Does everyone agree? <clears throat> yes. It's not an opinion. What is it giving? Instead Reason. Reasons. Reasons, exactly. Mm. Yes, exactly. There we go. Which of these sentences is Incorrect. It's a challenge. It's subtle, this one, I'll warn you. The first one. That one's actually okay. There's one. Second one, I think, number, number B. I'm saying B. Okay, I'm going to give you one little clue. It's the punctuation. I think they were a little thinky on this one. It's really subtle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they the end with the exclamation mark. Well, the actually, the, it's because... Okay, so this one is because... So if we look at it, because it's a nice day... Yeah, come on. Yes, let's go outside. As I'm working later than usual. Come on. Let's have dinner tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I never thought about C. You never thought about C. I told you it was very subtle. We'll do a little mm. bit on punctuation um, over the next few minutes. Oh, wow. so, Thank you. No worries. So. There we go. So we can all see that they missed out the comma on this one. Mm -hmm. Very subtle. <laughs> so it's good for remembering where to use commas when we're using. So if we had put the clause, this reason clause at the end of the sentence, would we need or after the let's go outside or let's have dinner or I don't have to work. If we put it at the end, would we have to use punctuation to separate it? Yeah, I think so. No? No. You only have to use these, with these clause only have to be set apart because they're at the beginning of the sentence. Okay. All right. Uh, All right. Otherwise, it would just say, let's go outside because it's a nice day. <laughs> so you would go all the way down. Um, right. So, which of these sentences focuses on the reason for something? As opposed to the outcome. B? Oh, 
What the, see yeah. why they it's a really it's, awkward question, isn't it? I, sh I probably should have skipped this today. All right. Ah, uh, well, let's see. Um, that um, condition, as uh, she didn't know what he looked like, as she had never met him before, it's kind of a condition. What actually caused something to happen? What caused something to happen? Which oh, okay. hey, hey. There but, we go. Hey. It's the first one. Say again. Uh, it's the first one. It's the A. Yes. There's an actual cause. So the set the question is worded awkwardly. If they said which one of these sentences describes a cause mm. or focuses on a cause, then we get A because it focuses not just on the reason, but the cause of something. It's even in the word, because. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, our six minute English is going to be an article about some causes as well. So let's see if we can hear any descriptions of reasons for things and causes, okay? So if we were going to summarize this article, um, our article is on climate change and animal evolution. So these are talking about causes and effects and reasons for things. So let's see if we can hear the language that they use to describe these things in this article. Um, the vocabulary that they're looking for uh, that they're highlighting today are, whoops, hello, come on, don't do that, there we go, evolution, flora and fauna, drab, beak, cling on, and trait, but there's a lot of really good general scientific language in this article, particularly good if you are, um, Every time you read something in on a subject that is outside of your usual reading uh, vocabulary, you'll gain uh, a broader vocabulary and future articles will be even easier to read and you'll do better in the IELTS as well. So let's get on with it and listen to something on climate change and animal evolution. Six Minute English from bbclearningenglish.com Hello, this is Six Minute English from BBC Learning English. I'm Rob. And I'm Sam. Now, when we think about famous figures in the history of science, the name of Charles Darwin often comes up. Darwin is most famous for his theory of evolution, the idea that animals change and adapt in response to their environment. In the 1830s, he visited the Galapagos, a string of islands in the Pacific Ocean, famous because of the unique animals living there. It was while in the Galapagos, observing small birds called finches, that Darwin started forming his theory of evolution. But today, the animals of the Galapagos face the same pressures as animals across the world because of the effects of man-made climate change. Warming sea waters and more frequent extreme weather events are affecting animals as much as humans. So in this program, we'll be asking, can animals evolve to deal with climate change? But first, I have a question for you, Sam, and it's about Charles Darwin's trip to the Galapagos. In 1831, Darwin set sail around the world collecting samples of flora and fauna, the plants and animals of the places he visited. But what was the name of the ship he sailed in? Was it A, HMS Beagle, B, HMS Victory, or C, SS Great Britain? Hmm. Maybe it was B, HMS Victory? Are you sure? No. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, I'll reveal the correct answer later in the programme. Now, it may have been the Galapagos finches that started Charles Darwin thinking about how animals adapt to their environment, but as naturalist Kyoko Gotanda explained to BBC World Service programme The Climate Question, 
Darwin's first impression of the small birds wasn't very good. When Darwin got to the Galapagos Islands, he actually wasn't that interested in the finches. They were kind of a drab color and they didn't have a very interesting song. He sampled, though, the finches from different islands. And so when he got back to England and he was looking at all the variation in beak shape and size and body size and shape, and he was recalling how certain finches were found on certain islands but not on other islands. In contrast to more colourful birds like Galapagos parrots, the finches, Darwin observed, were drab, dull and boring looking with little colour. Instead, what Darwin noticed were variations in the finch's beak, the hard pointed part of a bird's mouth. Finches born with a beak that could help them get more food were more likely to survive and have babies. Over time, as the birds passed on their successful genes, they adapted to fit in with their environment, what we know as evolution. So if animals can evolve to survive their environment, can they also evolve to cope with the impact humans are having on the climate? Well, there's already some evidence to show they can. Studies on birds in the Brazilian Amazon and red deer on the Isle of Rum in Scotland show warmer temperatures have caused animals to evolve smaller bodies. It's easier to keep cool when you're small. American conservationist Thor Hansen records and measures anole lizards in the Caribbean. He wants to see how the effects of man-made climate change, in this case hurricanes, is affecting the lizards. <laughs> Listen to what Thor found out as he speaks with presenters of BBC World Services, The Climate Question. But what you can see is that large toe pads and strong front legs give some lizards a tighter grip. When they do start to let go and their body starts flapping in the air like a flag, smaller back legs reduce the drag and allow them to cling on and survive the hurricane. So the survivors were those lizards with those characteristics and they passed those traits along to their offspring. Thor's lizards develop stronger front legs and smaller back legs, allowing them to cling on, hold on to something tightly when hurricanes pass through. It's this trait, a genetically determined characteristic, that allows the lizards to survive and is passed on to their babies. Thor checked other areas of the Caribbean where hurricanes were frequent and found the same traits in lizards there. Proof of evolution in action. But whereas we often think of evolution happening over hundreds, even thousands of years, the changes in the Caribbean lizards happened in around 40 years, something that would have surprised Charles Darwin. Which reminds me of your question, Rob. Ah, yes, I asked you the name of the ship Darwin sailed around the world in. Darwin's ship was called the HMS Beagle, and appropriately enough, it was named after an animal. A beagle is a type of dog. OK, let's recap the vocabulary from this programme about evolution. The way living things adapt to their environment and pass these adaptations on to their children. Flora and fauna is another way of saying the plants and animals of a place. Drab means dull and colourless in appearance. A bird's beak is the hard, pointed part of its mouth. To cling on means to hold on very tightly. And finally, a trait is a genetically determined characteristic. Once again, our six minutes are up. Join us again soon for more interesting topics and useful vocabulary here at Six Minute English. Goodbye for now. Bye. Six Minute English from the BBC. There we go. So did you hear any language describing um, cause and reasons, giving reasons for things? Yes. <clears throat> Quite a lot, eh? Yeah. Good. Um, I will include the link to this again. I do recommend that you listen to it again and um, see how much of the vocabulary you can pull out. There's a lot of really good language in there about um, species, the way that we would talk casually about um, climate change and about uh, animal evolution. 
So there's some really good science language in there. Um, and uh, yes? Just, it's not a question. Just I wanted to share you my opinion. I think this, the whole topic was more like case and effects kinds of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, because the main topic was uh, change in the animal because of the change in the climate and the, in the environment, which consequently affects their physical body development, like we heard in the lizard front and back legs, which was quite interesting. Exactly. In <laughs> yeah. So if, if the uh, lizard's legs weren't strong enough to hold on, what would happen to the lizard? They would have eliminated. Yes, and they wouldn't have a chance to breed. Yes. So, um, so we could say they wouldn't have a chance to breed because their legs were not strong enough to survive. <laughs> or to hold Interesting. Back. This was first time I heard this. <laughs> yeah. There's a, it's, it, there's a, a lot of really interesting articles uh, that you can find on evolution and on uh, the effect of climate change on animals. So uh, now you have more language to uh, listen or read those articles as well, hopefully. So, thank you. Right. Uh, thank you. I'm just going to remind everybody, please do keep yourself muted unless you're speaking. Uh, if you want to speak and you don't want to, you can either just turn on and say something. Uh, you can unmute yourself and say something. That's fine. If you want to put your hand up, then I will ask you to please unmute yourself. But if otherwise, try and keep the background noise um, down by keeping yourself muted unless you're speaking. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, right. So back we go. So we've had an interesting thing. We know if we put a because, an as, or a since at the beginning of a sentence, what do we need to add? You can type it in the um, chat or unmute and shout either way. So what I would like to do is take a quick look at, uh, yeah, put this down, done with that one. And I'll bring up today's, oh, right, the PDF. Boop. That's not here. Yeah. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I forgot I put it down there. There we go. Um, so, quick review of sentences. As I'll never stop reviewing sentence structure. <laughs> so, let me just uh, get the right page up and share the screen again. Share screen. Hello, there we are. So once again, here we are. We have our sentence structure. What, what is our basic sentence structure? What is the core sentence? It's right there on your screen. What is the core sentence? What are the parts of our core sentence? We have a subject. Yes. Can everyone see this? Verb. Yes. Our core sentence consists of a subject, a verb, and an object. We are always going to need a core sentence. If you don't have a core sentence, you don't have a sentence. And if you look at the most complex academic sentence in the hardest book you've ever read, 
you will still be able to find the subject, verb, and object of that sentence. Every English sentence has a core. It's holding the whole thing together, right? And we use adjectives and clauses to answer all the other questions. So our core sentence is who did what? After that, all the other information goes into adjectives and clauses. So we can start with our core sentence of Ali went to the shop. And then we have all of this extra information that we have put in. So I'd like to, when could be after work at 10 o'clock yesterday or before we met for lunch. Any of these could be the answer to when did Ali go to the shop, right? Which, which person, which Ali? Oh, not, not Ali across town. No, Ali, who is my neighbor. <laughs> which shop? The shop that's open all night. All right. Uh, then we can answer where. Where is the shop? Around the corner? Across town? In Paris? It could be anywhere. How did he go? On his bicycle or the, by the bus? Why did he go? Because he was out of milk or to buy crisps. So I would like for everyone right now, pick one of as many of these as you want and fill them in. It can you, if you can see at the bottom, we have, I have the sentence with gaps in it. So in the chat, See if you can write a sentence using as many of these as possible. If you can't write it in the chat, write it on a piece of paper, that's fine. Just take, I want you to use these clauses to build the information into our sentence. All right, it's just a practice. Decide which of these clauses, and then if you want to read yours out, put your hand up and I'll call on you, okay? So we've got all of these to choose from. Hopefully you can see them. Uh, I can try and make it bigger. There we go. So Ali went to the shop. If we put because he was out of milk at the beginning, what do we need after because he was out of milk? Our punctuation, right? Okay, so I'll give you, I'll give you one minute, two minutes to write a sentence. You can write it in the chat or you can write it in you on a piece of paper. You can write it in the chat or you can write it on a piece of paper. All right. One more minute. Put the pieces together. Really good, Abdul. Really good. Um, but the only thing that I would change is rather than in the corner, we would say on the corner. Okay. So the preposition for the corner around the corner works on the corner also works. Really good.
Good job. All right. Hopefully you've written your sentence, adding in some of these clauses. Um, if anyone else wants to type them in the chat, go right ahead. Uh, otherwise, uh, if anyone would like to read theirs out, you can do that now. Have you written it down? Can you read it out? All right. So we'll keep practicing building sentences. All right. You can always send it in an email as well. Uh, let's see. There we go. Now I'm going to switch over to, uh, yeah. Switch over to talking about paragraphs. So last week, we talked about paragraphs and I wrote a little paragraph. And what was the subject of the video we watched last week? Do you remember? What is in the chat? Oh, very good. Um, Okay. The so the right. Just just to recap. Thank you for your um for your sentence, Kumba. Um. The the idea is, but you've lost you've lost your focus. Do you, you've got a question at the beginning? Uh, followed by um, an answer, really, uh, which makes it a rhetorical question. <laughs> but um, what I'm really asking you to do with this exercise is to use these clauses to fill out this sentence. All right. It's a practice to use the clauses here to fill out these uh, sentences. Oh, are there reactions? Okay, all right. So because we're focusing on taking our core sentence, holding on to that core sentence, and building more information into it. All right. So let's focus on staying inside that sentence and adding the information so we don't lose the focus of the sentence. We just make it a bigger, more interesting, more informative sentence. Okay. I think that, yeah, I have. Somehow I don't get to see the reactions. So if you've got your hand up, I'm not seeing all of it, I think. Um, so forgive me if I've skipped you. Um, if you would like to hang on to that, we can do those at the end of the class as well. Right. So what are what are the parts of a paragraph that we're going to be looking for? Does everyone remember what we did for, oh, uh, actually, there's another PDF structure. Yes. Uh, oh, right, that's sentence structure. So who remembers what paragraph structure is? Sentence is a part of paragraph. Yes, we're going to use sentences. It's usually mm. um, four or more sentences usually mm. not more than about six tops. Mm. All right. Three to five would be average. Um, it depends on the complexity of your, of your uh, topic, of course. Um, they can be quite long. So 
Yes, the first sentence of a paragraph is, what do we want to know? Why should I read a block of text? Why, why should I, what should be at the beginning of it to tell me why I should want to read it? Topic sentence. Yes, you got to tell me what you're going to write about if you want me to keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> and then what do I expect to see after that? The details. Yes. So after that, there's going to be supporting details that illustrate that subject. So you've gotten me interested by telling me what the subject is. Now you have to tell me some interesting facts or ideas or thoughts or amplifications, whatever your ideas are for that subject. Okay. And after we've had a couple of those, what's going to be at the end? A user punctuation. Well, definitely. The, con the conclusion. Yes, there'll be a link or conclusion. Now, if it's a paragraph inside a larger essay, it will be a sentence that links that essay, that paragraph to the main topic of the essay. If it's a paragraph on its own, it will simply have a conclusion that tells you, reminds you what the paragraph was about and why. Maybe ties in some of those details, ties some of those details together and restates how they support the um, the topic sentence. Excellent. So that sounds great, doesn't it? And then we look at an empty page and our minds go blank, right? So if I sit down and say, oh, I'm going to write a paragraph about, did anyone write a paragraph about kindness last week? Did you think about our, remember we watched, uh, if, if you were here, we watched um, an article on kindness. Is kindness good for you? Does it make you happier or healthier? And um, I talked about some topics that we could use for an article. If you missed it, you can uh, watch the video. And hopefully in the uh, email, get the link and watch the, um, the article again. So let's think about it. what do we want to, if we're going to write an article about kindness, what kind of a thing, what do you think a topic sentence could be? What kind of a question could we answer? One of my favorite is what does it mean to be kind? What does that mean? What does kindness look like? Or what is kindness? Or how it affects us? Ooh. How kindness affects us. That's a nice one. I like that. We could come up. So what you would um that's great. So let's try. Uh, does anyone else have an idea? Or do we, is everyone happy with that? What do you think? Is that a good one? Shall we use that as a topic? All right. So if our topic is how kindness affects us. That's lovely. Uh, let's think of some ideas. What are some of the ways in which kindness? Whoop. Oh, <laughs> uh, I meant to put that down here. So let's think of some example. What are some of the ways that kindness affects us? Maybe an example of something that is kind and how it affects us. So what's an example? If someone smiles at you, so that's a very little kind of kindness, but it's good and we react in the same way. Yeah, 
Yes. So when someone smiles, we smile back. So that's nice. And what happens when you, how does that make you feel when you smile? Uh, it feels better, good. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. What's another example of a small kindness or some kind of kindness? Uh, when someone held the door for you. Oh, when someone holds the door. That's nice. Yeah, like strange. And when held the door for you, that's actually nice. And how does that make you feel? Mm, happy. And I would think like this person is friendly and nice. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, when someone gives you a gift, that's good, Kumba. Okay. Helping others without asking is a kindness. Uh, helping, oops, that's better words. What are some other examples? Let's think. Other small things. What kind of, what kind of ways do people help others without asking? Oh, like helping he, helping someone crossing the road, for example. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Yes. You can help you can help someone without talking like by like for example, if you are in a queue and person came in, it, it seems like urgent, you will just give him way to, to him or her way to Put this order first before the before you, without saying anything. We just give him way to put his own order first. That's really nice. That's really nice. I like I'm, doing that in grocery stores when someone's only got one or two things, and I have a big basket. Letting them go first always feels nice. Yeah. A, a very good type of kindness to me would be giving way to other vehicles and road traffic. Oh, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Another kindness again without talking is like, Helping someone to climb the stairs without talking, like when you want to go to the masjid, there are some people that will find it difficult to climb in it at the same time. Excellent. So, um, great. These are some great ideas. And now, do you think we have enough to write a paragraph? Yes, we do. So this is how you write a paragraph. You don't sit there with the blank sheet of paper and try and write from the very first word to the very last word. You need to sit and think of some ideas. What are the sorts of things that I could add to this? If you have all of those things before you start writing, then the writing becomes really <laughs> easy. Okay, so... What is really common, what there's a, I see a common thread in all of these. Well, let's see, I'm gonna move this one up because this one's slightly different. So I'm gonna move this up. Okay. 
right? So when someone gives you a gift, that always feels really good. But when someone smiles, we smile and we feel better. And then what are all of these in common? The art of giving. It's really just helping. I mean, in, in fact, the word that we've repeated most often. Yeah. What's the word that we've repeated most often? Kindness. Oh, helping. helping. Yeah. Helping. Yes. So we could say, we could say that <laughs> kindness always makes us feel better, right? Yeah. Kindness makes us feel good. Doing something kind makes you feel good. When someone smiles, we smile, we all feel better. And that's great. But most often, the, the easiest way to, to make other people happy, besides a smile, is by helping them. Right? And then we can give some examples of ways of helping people. So do you see how this, um, do you see how that paragraph can come together? Okay, so getting a gift is lovely. Uh, getting a smile from somebody is, uh, is wonderful, but helping someone without without asking, without them having to ask us, it really makes you feel good. And here are the different ways that that could happen. So all of a sudden, we've got a paragraph. Yeah. So we can pop these up here because those will get turned into, we can use those to, to build our, um, our opening sentence. And then these can become uh, oh, actually, I'm just going to move this up above. There we go. And There we go. There's our beginning. Helping others without asking is wonderful. Like when someone holds the door open or helping someone across the road. Or in a queue, letting someone else go first. Oh, actually, I see two others that are related. If we take out in a queue, what is similar to the in a queue? Uh, giving away the other people. On the exactly, we've got two that are almost exactly the same. Yeah. So we can combine helping these two examples, helping someone across the road, oops, or helping someone to climb the stairs, right? Yeah. So those two could go together. So once you've got, hopefully you're you're seeing how this process is going, right? So we came up with all of these ideas, and now we can put all of these ideas in a wonderful order. Yes. That makes sense. So did we do it on purpose? Did we put everything, did we have to think of them in the right order? No. It was easy to think of them when we were just going, okay, what's, what's a nice thing that you could do to help someone, right? What's a nice, what's a kindness, right? And then we can look at that list of them and go, oh, wait a minute, these, these have an order already inside them. We can find that order. Here's two about letting other people go first. Here's two about um, assisting them with something difficult. And it all starts with smiling and holding a door open. So 
What a beautiful paragraph we've written. Right. So all of these notes, all of these notes will be um, in the email that I send you. Take all of these and maybe um, we'll do this. We'll take all of these and we'll write them into a paragraph. Okay. So I will send you all of these notes. Can you please mute yourself? Okay, sorry. If you're not able to mute yourself, I'm going to send you all of these notes. Can you please mute yourself? Okay, sorry. If you're not talking to the class, the so we I will send you all of our beautiful notes. We've got this gorgeous order in them. And now you can write, we can write paragraphs about what it means to be nice, how kindness affects us and how we can be kind. All right. So I'll send you that. Do your best. Write uh See if you can make these into a paragraph. Uh, I will include the um, the sentence structure uh, puzzle too, so that you can put all of the pieces together on that as well. So you could write a sentence, or you can write a paragraph, or you can write both. Okay. Any questions on the grammar today? Any questions on the writing? class today. Anything that we've covered so far? Okay. Yep. Don't worry if you come in late or if you have to leave early, the recording is available, um, will be available to you afterwards. So um, thank you for coming. So we are going to move on to um, the IELTS portion of our lesson. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the listening exam, and we're going to have a practice at the listening exam. So if you've got any questions about what we covered, so we looked at using because, as, and since. We looked at, um, we listened to an article on reasons for changes in animals due to the environment or the weather. And we built a sentence using, um, we, we added clauses to our core sentence and we generated ideas for a paragraph. Good job, everyone. Right. So next on the agenda. Yay. If there's no questions, I'll keep going. Oh, I'm missing some people. Right. Share the screen again. There we go. So the IELTS listening exam. It is 30 minutes long. There are 40 questions. It seems like a lot, but it goes, it's, it's not that bad. <laughs> there are four sections. Uh, the first is general conversation or for information. So it's usually somebody asking for information from um, a help desk of some sort, okay? The second will be a general talk. So somebody talking about a subject explaining something like a tour guide and the third will be an academic conversation that will usually be a conversation between students or between students and a lecturer and then the fourth will be an academic lecture yes that's the hardest part <laughs> okay so um you are given if you're Doing the paper exam, you have an extra uh, 10 minutes at the end in order to transfer your answers to a special answer sheet. And 
the uh, which is great because it means you have the opportunity to guess on any that you may have missed at that time. Um, never leave anything blank because you don't get any more points off for a wrong answer than you do an empty slot. So if you leave the answer blank, you definitely get no points. If you make a guess at it, you might get a point. So you always want to aim for the most possible points. So there's also a secret to the listening exam, which is write in all capital letters. If you write in all capital letters, then you don't have to worry about which words need capitalization. It counts. Everything is fine. All right. So if you write your answers or type your answers in all capital letters, then you will not get marked off for capitalization. All right. It's just a secure way of taking that exam. So there we go. That's the excitement. Ah. Now, on the listening exam, and you will find this also on the writing exam, there will be instructions before each of the sentences. And they will say things like, write no more than one number. These are some examples here. Um, let me make this just a little bigger just to make sure everyone can see it. So if it says, write no more than one number for each answer. What is it looking for? Can you write a word? No, it's just one number. Just a number. No more than two words for each answer. How many words can you write? Two words. You could write two words. You can yeah. also write one word because it says no more than. So you can uh, write less than yes. two as well. Okay. It could be one word or two words. Mm. Can it be three words? No. No, exactly. Okay, very good. Often you will find ones like really complicated ones like this one at the bottom of the screen. Write no more than three words and or a number. Oh, sorry, I should highlight this as well, that when they say no more than two words, if you say, if the answer is church or a church or the church, would all of those fit? Sorry, can you say it again? Okay, if the answer is, um, okay, uh, sorry. Um, it is important to know that the two words limit includes articles and connectors. All right. Yes. Yeah. So if you use and or 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 a, an or the, those are words, they count. So yeah. if the answer is um, the church, if you say the yellow church. is do two words. Exactly, because that's still, that's three words because you've used the article. Yeah. Okay. So if the answer is yellow church, then it needs to be church. the article. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, good. Mm. So. It's just it, it's just important to understand what the you know what the instruction really means. You know, two words means nothing besides those two words. It can't be an article or any other tiny word. Every tiny word counts. Um, this, by the way, comes into your favor when it gets to the writing exam because on the writing exam they say one hundred and fifty words. I, A, N, and the count. <laughs> so it's not 30, uh, 150 big words on the writing exam. It's 150 words, including articles. So 
Here's a complicated one. This is about the most complicated instruction that you will get. Write no more than three words and or a number. Okay, so there's a lot of options. If it's no more than three words, can you answer with one word? You can answer with one word. You can answer with two words. You can answer with three no. words. Oh, sorry, this is not working well. You can work with answer with three words. Because it says and or a number, you can have one number as the answer. Yeah. You can have one word and a number. <laughs> you can have two words and a number. And because it says no more than three words and a number, you can have three words and a number as well. Okay. So with this one, basically anything you answer is going to be correct. So it just can't be more than three words and a number. Okay. So it's um, it's like the last year. 2021 so these are three words and a number is that correct yes okay. yeah exactly so um but yeah so those are the kinds of instructions um when you are listening for the answers don't think about this don't worry about that this instruction on the listening exam is obviously in the writing exam, it's in, I'm sorry, in the reading exam, it's important to look at those right at the beginning because you know it helps you understand what you're looking for in the text. Where on the listening exam, we only will pay attention to these instructions at the end when we're copying our answer over to make sure we're using the right number of words and letters. Uh, if you take the computer-based um, exam, there we go. If you if you're taking the computer-based exam, you have a shorter time. I think it's three to five minutes to um, review your answers. Um, so, because you don't have to actually manually copy everything over, but you have time to read through all of your answers and make sure that your word count is correct for each answer. All right. So however you take the exam, you will have time to make sure that your answer fits this instruction. So there we go. Oh, so much. So once again, where do you think, <laughs> where do you think the answers are to be found on the listening exam? Where are we going to find our answers? How are we going to find our answers? What is going to lead us to our answers? Where are the answers on the IELTS exam? We're looking, where can we find them? In the conversation, during the conversation. For... Oh, so close. This, the answer to this, the question that I'm asking you is the same for the whole exam. The most important part of the listening exam is at the end in the conclusion introduction where do we find the answers in the IELTS exam <laughs> yes Fatima you've got it reading the questions <laughs> yeah. the answers are in the questions you can listen and, yeah. you can listen and listen and listen and listen and listen. If you haven't read the question, you will not find the answer. <laughs> okay? Mm. So that's what we're going to spend the rest of the class doing is looking at uh, what do the questions look like? So once again, I've, I've added these uh, listening tips here. 
We're going to find, we're going to read those questions. We're going to find the answers. We're going to find grammatical clues. We are going to uh, practice listening, of course, but, uh, and, and yeah, and check all of our answers. So, um, and remember to take a big, deep breath whenever we feel tense. All right. Um, very good. Okay. So, uh, right, that's all resources. Now we need to switch over to our PDF. And there we go. Oh, that's the reading. Oh, did I not put this up? Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, let me load the uh, practice real quick. Um, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Uh, don't have. Don't worry if you have to leave early. It will all be in the recording. I'm just going to very quickly find. Oh, wait a minute. I know where it is. There's practice exam one. There we go. Let me just get the. Um, audio set up, sorry, there we go. Two seconds, just need to find the audio files. No. Oh, I can't believe I didn't leave this up. I'm very sorry. Um, there we go. Excellent. There we go. Um, Listening one. There we go. Practice test one. You will hear a number of different recordings and you'll have to answer questions on what you will hear. Section one. You will hear a man asking. There we go. Okay, right, ready, set, go. So let's look at an actual listening exam and see what we can see. Um, go show my screen again. There we go. So I'm going to. The worst time arranging things on my screen. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so here we have our first section on our first attempt listening exam. So what do we see and what are we thinking about it? What clues can you get just from looking at the question? That's what I want you to be thinking about. What are the clues that we can get? So what we wanna do when we're looking at a chart like this, so we're going to need to fill in some words into this chart, okay? What have we got? It's a class schedule, right? So it's a class timetable. I've got that blinking line there. 
There we go. That's better. Um, so we've got a timetable for a language school, right? Can everyone see that? So here's the words class schedule. Very good. So there we go. We know what we're looking at. Um, so they have Chinese classes, they've got Japanese classes, and they've got French classes. Now, what do we think is going to be, what are we going to be looking for? What information are we going to be listening for to answer question one? What is going to fill in this gap? If we look at the one below it, what do we see? So if we look at Chinese. Yes. Yes, days. There's going to be where it's going to be days of the week. Right? And how about down here on Japanese? We need to fill in number two. What can number what can the first, what can the Chinese tell us about the Japanese lessons? Mornings or evenings, or oh. on the Japanese. What's the gap? Uh, beginners, beginners or advanced? Exactly, it's going to be a level. It's going to say beginners, intermediate, or advanced. Those are the the three usually, right? And we can tell down here if we look at French, it's intermediate. Okay. It's so there we go. So. Question two is going to be either beginner, intermediate, or advanced. And level th and, and question three is also going to be. Yeah. One the, of them. Um, exactly. One of them, yeah. And on the last one, so here on day one, uh, on, on Chinese, the, uh, we we need the days of the weeks because it's told us the time of day, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Evening. It's told us the time of day. But down here on French, they've told us which day, but what is missing? The days. We don't know whether it's morning, evening, or afternoon it could be any of those what time of day okay so we can look at the information that we've been given in order to know what we're listening for okay so now we know that for question one we're listening for a day of the week right for question number two, we are listening for the level of language. Question number three, mm -hmm. we are listening for the level of language. Mm -hmm. And question mm -hmm. number four, we're listening for? Three times. Time of day. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, shall we give it a try? Section one, you will hear a man asking for information about language classes over the phone. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four on page five. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning, Globetrotters Language School. How may I help you? Yes, I was wondering if you could give me some information on language classes. The woman answers the phone. Globetrotters Language School. 
so the word Globetrotters has been written at the top of the form. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Good morning, Globetrotters Language School. How may I help you? Yes, I was wondering if you could give me some information on language classes. Certainly. What language are you interested in studying? Well, that's the thing. I'm interested in learning Japanese, but I'd also like to improve my Chinese. I don't know which to study right now. Maybe the class schedule will help you decide. Did you want to study in the morning, afternoon or evening? I work in the evenings, so mornings or afternoons would be best. Then that decides it for you. We offer an advanced Chinese class, but it meets on Wednesday and Friday evenings. I couldn't do that. When do the Japanese classes meet? We have beginning Japanese on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. No, wait, that's intermediate Japanese. Which level do you want? Advanced? Uh, no, beginning, definitely. I know some Chinese and some French, but I'm a real beginner with Japanese. Well then, are you free Monday, Wednesday and Friday mornings? That's when the beginning Japanese classes meet. We also have intermediate French on Friday mornings. I could do those mornings, but I'd prefer afternoon. Don't you have anything in the afternoon? We have intermediate Japanese class on Wednesday and Friday afternoons. I really need a beginner class, so I'll take the morning Japanese class. Could you give me an idea of the cost? What would be the tuition for the Japanese class? Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10 on page 5. Right. So, how did you do? How did you do? Did you did you do you know what evening the Chinese advanced classes are on? Who can say? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have the chat, but now I've got the chat open again. Okay, you can type it in the chat or you can tell me here. What evenings do the Chinese classes, advanced Chinese classes take? Uh, are they given? Yes, Wednesday and Friday. Very good, very good, good listening. And number two, this one was tricky. Did they give the correct information first? This one was tricky. She said one thing and then she changed her information, didn't she? It's intermediate. Yes, but what did she say initially? A beginner. Yes. Very good. That is very common, by the way. That is very, very common. They will say one thing and they will change their minds. Or if it's two people making an appointment with each other, they may talk about what days are possible and give lots of days and times, but you have to listen for the one that they agree on. So um, it's not always the first thing you hear that is the correct answer. So good job on that. How about number three? How about number three? Beginners? Yes, that's when the beginning class is. Exactly. And what day is intermediate French? What time of day is intermediate French? Evenings. Ooh. Mornings. Morning. Mornings. It was yes. mornings. It was mornings. Very good. Okay. Hey, it was the first time doing something like this. So bravo. Well done. Thank you. For good job. All right. Let's look at the next set of answers. Oh dear. What are we going to be listening for on this one?
What are we going to be listening for? Fees. For fees. Numbers. 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 Exactly. So. And how much oh. one week? Yeah. Tuition information. So exactly. So he was just asking about that, and now we're going to hear about. Oh, it. Now we're going to hear about it. Okay. So. What are we looking, what, what is going to be the most important thing to listen for? The weeks. Yeah, how much time it covers. Mm. Okay, now she may be saying the number before the time or she might be saying the time before the number. Let's listen and see how well we do. Sorry, there's big gaps in the recording, but I can't see them, so. Yeah, we'll start soon. So I think it will start soon. Now listen oh, and answer go. questions five to 10. Oops. The beginning level classes meet three times a week, so they cost a bit more than the other levels. For a six week course, the cost would be $575. That's a bit steep. If it's hard for you to pay that much, you could sign up for just four weeks of class and pay $410, or you could pay for one week at a time at $125 a week. That comes out to be much more expensive once you add up all the weeks. That's true. You can save money by registering for two levels together. For example, pay for your beginning and intermediate classes now and you'll get 12 weeks of class for just $1,050. That's not a bad deal, but I can't come up with that much money at once. I'll just pay for the six-week course. Fine. That class begins next week, so you need to register right away. Can't I register over the phone? No, I'm sorry. We don't take phone registrations. What you'll need to do is visit the school office today or... I'm going to pause that because we didn't uh, and move this back slightly. Um, let me see if I can get... Add up all the weeks. That's true. You can save money by registering for two levels together. For example, pay for your beginning and intermediate classes now and you'll get 12 weeks of class for just $1,050. That's not a bad deal, but I can't come up... Okay, there we go. So, what did you hear? How much were, first of all, were they in the exact same order? No. No, they no. weren't, were they? What was the first one she said? Four weeks. Yes. So, I, the first one I heard was six weeks. Yeah, I missed that one. <laughs> yes. Okay. Did, who heard the six weeks? Did anyone hear? You did? Good. Good. Thank you, Kumba. Good job. So how much was six weeks? It's about $500, 500 and something dollars. Yes. It was hard to hear. 575 $5, dollars, yeah. 575 was the answer to that one. And number six, um, and the next, the next answer that she gave was, uh, the next one that we heard was how many weeks? Four weeks. Yes. And how, and um, how much was four weeks? $475. Oh, close. Anyone else? You got the first number right. It's 400, yeah, 425. Is that wrong? Does anyone <laughs> else have another answer? <laughs> yes? Who was the one who heard the, I'm sorry, I missed your name when I, when you, when you, 
uh, answered. Um, all right, it was 410. 10, oh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, how much for one week? It's 125. Okay, very good. You got that one exact. Mm. And the last one, 12 weeks. We got an advantage. You got to hear it twice. 1,050. And 50. Bravo. <laughs> well done, Mohammed. Did you get it when you heard it the first time? Yes. Good. Two times. Excellent. The last one, the first time. Excellent. Okay. So I paused it because I want to look at, I want to talk about the method of reading, how, how, you, how you approach a question where you have to fill in information. Remember on the class schedule, we looked at the, we looked at the other ways, uh, at the other entries to see what kind of information we were looking for in each of those questions. When you have a sentence, <clears throat> when you're filling in the blank, you have the grammar in the sentence to give you a clue of what you are listening for, okay? So students can register. So if we read these questions, students can register for a class by visiting and it's going to be something that fits. So what are things that you can visit? The school campus. Campus, an office. Website. A website. Right. So that's what we're listening. We're going to be listening for a place of some sort or a tool. Okay. And what about this one? Blank is in charge of student registration. What do you think that blank could be? Sun? The student office. It could be the student office. It could be someone's name. Yeah. The, the admin, the admin is the admin office. Administrator, the secretary, it could be. Okay. Yeah, so it's going to be something that refers to either a place or a person, either an office or a person. So let's find out. With that much account, money at once, account office. I'll just pay for the six week course. Fine, that class begins next week, so you need to register right away. Can't I register over the phone? No, I'm sorry, we don't take phone registrations. What you'll need to do is visit the school office today or tomorrow. Bring a cheque for the tuition and a photo ID. Is that all? Yes, we'll give you a registration form to complete, or you can save time by visiting our website and downloading the form there. Complete it and bring it into the office with your cheque. Great, I'll stop by this afternoon. Fine. When you arrive, ask for Mr Lindsay. He's in charge of student registration. I'm sorry, Mr. Who? Mr. Lindsay, spelled L-I-N-D-S-A-Y. Thank you for your help. Thank you. We'll look forward to seeing you in class. Right. How did you do? Mr. Lindsay, a person. Yes. And did you get the spelling? How do I spell Lindsay? L-I-N-D-S-A-Y or S-E-Y, he said. Which one did he say? It matters. A. A. S A Y. Yes, Hala. Well done. Really good. Okay. And where do you have to visit? School registration office. Yes. School office. School office. School office. <laughs> All right. If you wrote school registration office, have you have you done it right? Registrar office. No, you can. Yes, can because be. it's no more than three words. Perfect. Yes, you got mm. it right, Helen. Exactly. If you say the school office, is it correct? Yes. yes. It's correct, yes. but there could be different offices in school. Um, finance office, admin office, register this is, office. This is true. Actually, it's probably going to be more. Uh, school is optional. 
but I think registration office is the best or school registration office will work as well. Okay, good job. So I'm hoping that you're now seeing how the, um, how the questions give you the answers, right? It's what to listen for. Um, now, for those of you who missed the answer to number seven, because it came before question number five, um, how many people worried about that? Was it hard to listen? This is unusual. It's very unusual for the information to come in a different order than the questions. Usually, the information will come in the exact same order as the questions. A very important technique on this exam is to um, always be listen. I call it listening forward. You're listening for the next answer. Okay. Um, the first time I listened to this, I missed the one. Uh, I missed. Uh, no, I missed the six week number because I was looking for. I was expecting to listen to one week, four weeks, six weeks, twelve weeks in order, and I missed the first one because I, um, I had to real it. I was realizing that they didn't have them in order. That is very unusual. Usually those answers will be in order and the key will be to listen to the first for the first one. If you don't hear that first one and you hear the second one instead, write the answer and start listening for the third one. All right, that's the way to keep going. If you worry about what you've missed, you will miss the next one and then it will just get worse. The worst thing that can happen in the listing exam is to completely lose your place. <laughs> when, um, so uh, we'll, we'll do some more practice on this. Um, oh gosh, this one's a challenge. But this is also really common. Um, skip on. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and do this. We're going to this one definitely comes in order. So, what do you think when you look at a question like this? So, we have to write the correct letter A to J next to the questions 11 to 15. So, all we're going to be doing is answering with a letter. What have we got here? Directions. We've got a map, yep, we've got directions. So we're going to be listening to someone telling us where to go. And these are the things that we're listening for. We're trying to find the Harborview bookstore. And these, I promise you, will come in order, okay? That was very unusual on that one. I, I think I might start with a different um, practice exam after this. So hopefully <clears throat> we're going to be going to a bookstore, a cafe, a souvenir store, an art gallery, and a park. So let's see if we can hear all of these. Uh, so I'm close that, open this, and I'm going to... Section two, you will hear a tour guide giving information about a shopping district. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15 on page six. This afternoon, we'll visit the city's shopping district. Several blocks in the area are closed to car traffic and I know you'll enjoy walking around there. I'd like to give you an overview of the district now, since you'll be on your own once we get there. You'll see on this map here that the shopping district consists of two streets, Pear Street 
which runs north and south, and Cherry Street, which crosses Pear Street right here. Let's start our tour here on Pear Street, where the star is. This star marks the Harbor View Bookstore. It's very popular among locals as well as tourists. You can buy a range of books of local interest as well as a variety of magazines and newspapers. It's directly across the street from the city library, which is also worth a visit. It's in one of the oldest buildings in the city and contains, among other things, an interesting collection of rare books. Now, moving up Pear from the bookstore toward Cherry, the next building on the left is the Pear Cafe. You'll notice it's right on the corner of Pear and Cherry Streets. It's a great place to relax while enjoying a delicious cup of coffee or tea. You can talk with friends or read quietly. They have a variety of books and magazines available. From the windows of the cafe, you can look right across Cherry Street for a lovely view of city gardens. It's a rather small garden, but it contains a variety of exotic plants and flowers. Let's leave the cafe and cross Pear Street. On the opposite corner, we're at Caldwell's Clothing Store, which you might also want to visit. They sell both men's and women's fashions from countries around the world. Continuing down Cherry Street, the next building on the right, after Caldwell's, is the Souvenir Shop. Stop in here to get maps and books about the local area, as well as t-shirts and postcards with pictures of the city. Now, we cross Cherry Street and we're at the Art Gallery, one building down from the corner. Here you can see, and of course, purchase, many fine paintings and sculptures by local artists. Let's keep going down Cherry Street toward the harbor. On the left, right after the gallery, is Harbor Park. It's a lovely place, and it's certainly worth spending some time there. Before you hear the rest of Right. How did you do? <laughs> How did you do? Did you find everything? Yeah, we tried. Okay. I tried to use my cursor to continue to show you where we were moving, how to, um, so sometimes it said to look across, but it didn't say that you were moving. It wasn't directions uh, to move. So let's see, what did you get for 11? That one was the easy one. I think this is it. Yes, it's A. Right, because that's our starting point was the bookstore. Okay, where did we find the Pear Cafe? You see. B. Yes. Oh, what was B? C. Uh, say C. Yes, it was C. What C. was, do you, did anyone remember what was in B? Library. Yes, Library. that was the library. Not on our list. So we didn't need to write it down. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about 13? That was a bit harder because where did we go after C? Uh, after the cafe, we looked across the street, but then when we left, which street did we cross? Cherry. We crossed, we looked across Cherry Street, but then we, but then we crossed we Cherry Street. Yeah. 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 And then he talked for a, she talked for a long time about the the shop at D, which Closing was shop. exactly. Yeah. And then we moved on to souvenirs. Souvenir. Good job, good job. From there, where did we go? Uh, Cherry Street. We yeah. crossed Cherry Street, and what did we find there? Uh, the cafe. No. Uh, art gallery. 
Yes, that uh, yeah, yeah. calorie was H. So 14, the answer to 14 was H. And then the last one, 15 Harbour Park, which one was it? I. I. Exactly. Really good. Really good. They are tricky. Yeah, um, but but we need maybe to do this without your helping because I think without your helping, I will miss up between Cross Cherry Street and Cross Pear Street. But the reason that I used the cursor to show you where we were is that that's what you need to do. Okay, so if I'm on, if I'm taking the paper exam and I've got a map like that in front of me, while I'm listening, I'm gonna keep my pencil or my finger on where I am so that I don't get lost. Okay, so that's why I put my cursor there. Okay, it's um, okay. All yeah, right. so it's a good idea. It's really, because it is easy to get lost because when once we were looking across Cherry Street, remembering that we hadn't left the cafe, right? If you're just, you know, if, if you're looking at something that you don't need, that means you haven't moved. And, but if you had moved, if I had moved my cursor across and then we'd crossed Paris Street, we would have thought that G was the clothing store, wouldn't we? Right? So it's really important yeah. to try and keep, use your pencil or your finger in the exam to make sure that you know where you've moved to when you're being led around a, a path like this. Okay. Um, there, I have a file um, on line that has all of these practices in them, uh, which actually, you know what, I'll just go ahead and show you. So, um, I'm going to keep screen sharing, but I'm going to go to one of these, this one. And um, so I have linked to this, I think last week, um, in last week's email, I will definitely do it this week as well. Um, IELTS, there's a file called IELTS practice. Here, you won't have all of that. I'll send you a link to that file. And in it, you will find uh, folders for the listening. So this is this week's listening. And it's got a PDF of the questions exactly as you saw in it. And it also has in this subfile oh there um oops so if i go into listening one i've got the pdf and there's the audio tracks to listen for it okay so i've got the and there's also the answers for it as well so you can check your answers um, if I go back to the IELTS practice, you'll see that there are five different, no, sorry, six different listening practices that you can do. And this including the lecture one, because it's the most difficult one. Oh, yeah, it's got the last one as well. OK. <laughs> um, so uh, it, that will give you a chance to practice those. As you see, if you scroll down, there's PDFs that have the um, that have reading. Uh, answers, uh, reading and writing practice questions as well. All right. So I will, um, I will include a link to this. Uh, in fact, I can do that now in the chat. Is it useful for me to put this in the chat? I can, I, I'll try it. Okay, so um, I'm going to get a link to that folder. Copy link. And I will put this to everyone in the chat so that it's there as well. Okay. And that way you can practice as many as you like. And 
I will also include a link to one of Asia's beautiful um, videos on how to get a top score in IELTS listening as well, because she does teach the way I do. Thank you guys. You've been absolutely fantastic. I know that the listening is a real challenge, and um, but you've done a great job today. Uh, so it's a, a really good start. And uh, we will keep going next week on the IELTS exam. Um, I think actually I'm going to pick out one of the um, section four um, practices to do with you next week. Is that does that sound good? Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's next week. We'll try the hardest one. Okay. Um, but other than that. Thank you very, very much. If you've got any questions, please let me know. Thank you very much for your nice class today and have a good day. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we appreciate your, your, your tuition as well. You're Thank very you very much.